All right. So today we'll be going over section 1.7 and 1.8. Um, 1.7 is basically rules of multiplication, division, um, <clears throat> and I believe this is where we go over double negatives and things like that. Yes. Um, we'll go over probably the one of the most famous unbreakable rules in mathematics. Um, and then we'll go over section 1.8, which is mostly exponential notation, you know, x squared, x cubed, things like that. We'll learn what those are all about um, and what they, how they affect simplification. <clears throat> all right. So first, we'll go over multiplication. <clears throat> so, whoops. The, uh, the general number, uh, sorry, the general number, the general rule is that when we multiply a positive number by a negative number, the result is negative. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at this little illustration down here. This is basically how common multiplication works, right? When we say 3 times 4, we really mean 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, right? We mean 3 added together 4 times, okay? So if we use this same concept, if we use this same concept with a negative 3, right? See, I have here negative 3 times 4. Then it's like we're adding 4 negative 3s together. So negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3. And so that, kind of in a nutshell, is why a negative times a positive is a negative. Okay? <clears throat> so... So... Um, so just like this guy outlines here, uh, when we multiply a negative number by a positive number, we multiply their absolute values and then change the, uh, change the answer to negative. You know, you don't need to really worry too much about the absolute values, though. You just multiply the, the numbers together and assign as according, as, as appropriate. <clears throat> okay, so this guy here, 8 times a negative 5. Anybody want to take a stab at what that's equal to? Negative 40. Right? We multiplied 8 by 5, and then we saw that there was a negative sign, so it's negative 40. All right? So if we're multiplying two fractions, right? what's the rule when we're multiplying fractions? That's addition or subtraction, right? Remember, multiplication is the easy one, right? When we want to multiply fractions, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Right, and so this is 1 times 5. We have a negative out here that we'll keep. 3 times 7, which is equal to a negative 5 over 21. All right, so all we did was multiply the two fractions, and then we applied the negative sign in the end. All right, so the multiplicative property of 0. <clears throat> so this is, this is, Fairly simple, but pretty important. Um, any number multiplied by zero is just zero. Even if it's a massive, big group of numbers and symbols and, and variables, if, they're, if it's just a big mess of junk and it's all multiplied by zero, it can equal nothing else but zero. Okay, That one little zero in the multiplication nullifies everything. All right? <clears throat> Product of zero and any number is zero. So. For our examples, suppose we had this big ugly multiplication, but then it was multiplied by zero. What do we get? Zero, right? We don't really need to do any more examples because that's pretty basic, right? You see a zero in there, the whole thing's zero. All right, what happens when we multiply two negative numbers? Here's where things might start to get a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so remember the last example where we lined up the negative threes. Let's sort of do, let's follow the pattern of what happens when we multiply by increasingly smaller numbers. So on this first column, you can see we have positive two multiplied by negative five. Just like we saw in the last page, that's kind of like adding two negative fives and we get a negative 10. Um, now, suppose we had a positive one and a negative five. Well, clearly that's just negative five. 0 times negative 5 is 0, but now here's where things get a little bit weird, right? We have negative 1 times negative 5, and so now 
instead of lining up the threes like, um, let's see now, so we had three times negative three is equal to negative three plus a negative three plus a negative three. Right, when we have a negative three times a negative three, then these addition signs in the middle all switch. Right, and so we have negative three minus negative three minus negative three. Sorry, there should be a negative out here too. Um, so all those double negatives work out to be positives and we get a positive nine. You can see the same thing happens down here with our pattern, right? We get a negative one times a negative five. Well, that's a double negative five and we just get five. If we get negative two times negative five, then we get two double negative fives. So the point of all that which is probably a little more confusing than it was meant to be, um, is that two negatives equal a positive when we're multiplying. Okay, so no matter what, if you got one negative and a positive, the result is negative. Um, if you have two negatives, the result is back to positive, right? It's like a double negative. It's saying like, you know, um, I don't not not like math, right? You know, it's, it's the same thing as like a verbal double negative. Okay, so let's try with this all right so we have two negative signs like you know if we want to be super rigorous we could write all this out but but immediately like when you have two negative signs if i see that you cross them out like this i know exactly what you did all right like i know that you saw there was double negatives there they don't actually have to be there anymore so you just crossed them out and moved on all right what's what's six times eight 48 there we go all right, same with this one, right? Once again, I'll, I'll write it out longhand now, I, I guess, you know. So um, we have the double negatives in front, and those are multiplied by 1.2 and 3, right? The result is still the double negatives, and then uh, 3.6, right? The double negatives go away, cancel each other out, the result is 3.6. So you could cancel the negatives out in the very beginning or at the very end. I'd recommend at the very beginning just so you don't have to track them through the problem, right? Like make everything as simple as possible right off the bat. Just show me somehow that you cross those out, right? So I, I don't like, you know, think that maybe you missed something, you know, or if you miss, mix something up, I can tell exactly what you did. All right. How about this guy? So this is interesting. Now we have three negative signs, right? <clears throat> so. Let's compartmentalize this and take it one step at a time. First, we're going to do this multiplication. Negative 2 times negative 5. What is that? 10. Positive 10, right? Those are two negatives, so they equal the positive. But now we have the last multiplication to do. Negative 3 times 10, that's equal to negative 30. Okay, so how about this guy? We're going to break this guy up into this section or this side and this side. We're going to do them separately. And pay attention to this pattern here because it's there's going to be a rule that pops out of all of this. <clears throat> so negative 4 times negative 6, well, that's a positive 24. Negative 1 times negative 2, that's a positive 2. This is equal to positive 48. So you may have recognized this by now. No matter what, when we have pairs, of negative signs, they cancel each other out. And so if we have any multiplication with an even number of negative signs included, it's positive. If we have any multiplication with an odd number of negative signs included, it's negative. Okay? Okay, so the property of negative 1 for any real number a, negative 1 times a is just equal to negative a. Um, so this, this is going to pop up a little bit, um, probably in the next couple sections. And, and we have to remember that whenever we write negative a or negative 3 or 
negative uh, 22. What we're really writing, this is this what we are what we have up here. This is shorthand, right? We're doing this the lazy person's way. What this is really meaning is that this is negative one times a, and this is negative one times three, and this is negative one times 22. This is going to come into play when we start dealing with powers, right? We have to multiply things uh, by each other. And you guys will see what I'm talking about in just a little bit here. But it's really important to remember that this is what we're actually writing. We just don't write the whole thing down because it's a pain in the butt. All right. Division. So, <clears throat> to multiply or divide two non zero real numbers. Um, so this is basically restating what we just went over, um, except for, it's important to note now, the same is true with division, right? And so if you have a fraction, the line in the middle, this bar right here, this is the sign for division, right? If you have a negative number on the top and a negative number on the bottom, those cancel each other out, all right? So we're multiplying or dividing. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. And of course, you know, if they're even, they're positive. If they're odd, they're negative. All right. So let's go ahead and do these examples. What's 14 over 7? 2, right? We put the negative in front because we had one negative included in our fraction. Negative 2. All right. 32 over 4, 8, and right off the bat, we can see there's two negatives, so we're going to cancel them out, right? That's just, that's what this is really saying is that's negative 1 over negative 1. So just like we canceled ones the other day, we get to cancel these two. All right, the next one, right? We have this negative sign here. There's only one of them, so we just put it out front. 10 over 2 is 5. What about this guy right here? Incorrect. This guy is undefined. Ah, we've got somebody, and don't worry if you didn't know that, because that's a weird one. This one is undefined, right? And so this is this is one of the most famous rules in mathematics, right? This is undefined. We don't have a value for any number over zero. This. 0 over any number, let's just call it n, this is equal to 0, right? But when 0 is in the bottom, when 0 is in the denominator, immediately we can say that's undefined. That doesn't make any sense, all right? If we have time, we'll watch a quick video on as, as to why that's the case, at least on this level of, of math. Okay. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> actually, I have, I have one other entertaining video. This is, this is not a video of of why it's the case, but this is what happens when you divide by zero. <laughs> There's no sound to it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> it's, it's not that great. It's just a bunch of animals screaming and then stuff blows up. <laughs> it's just weird. All right, so anyway. Anyway, don't divide by zero, otherwise um, puppies die. Yeah, animals scream, uh, you know, little furry rabbits get done done wrong. It's no good. All right. <laughs> so, ah, here's an important note. In a fraction, we take all negative signs into account. Okay, and so there's sort of three different spots that negatives can show up in a fraction, and it's all equivalent, right? These guys down here, right? This negative sign out in front is the same as writing it in the numerator, which is the same as writing it in the denominator. And so you can move those negative signs around and it doesn't change the value of the fraction, all right? And if you have, like this example up here, if you have a negative in the top and the bottom, those negatives could be moved out like that, right? And so it's, it's really just the negative ones. And because it's all a negative one, you can kind of mix them, you can match them, um, here is probably one of the more confusing cases is when there's a negative in the numerator, denominator, and out front, right? When that's the case, we just cancel those two negatives, and this one remains. 
Okay, so negative signs move around in fractions. You can move them if you're more comfortable with that. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll have a fraction that's like, you know, three over negative five, and it will be like plus. You know, and when that's the case, that confuses me. And so I like to rewrite that. I like to take this negative and throw it out front. And so then we just have negative three fifths, right? To me, that's that's much more straightforward than plus negative uh, three over negative five, right? So I just rewrite that for my own comfort. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do a bunch of examples. So. Suppose we wanted to rewrite these guys in equivalent forms. Okay, and this goes right along with what I was just doing, right? All we need to do is take this negative and throw it somewhere else, right? We could rewrite this as negative 5 over 2, or we could rewrite this as negative the whole fraction 5 over 2. All right, so those can be rewritten. This guy here, this could be rewritten as negative 3 over 10, or as uh, 3 over negative 10. All right, so how about this guy? So this has a little bit of everything included in it. <clears throat> so suppose they want us to perform this indicated operation. Uh, we can see that both are negative. What can we do right off the bat? Yeah, let's cancel those ones before we even get into this craziness. Bam, those guys are gone. All right, now we're multiplying two fractions without negatives. How do we do that? Straight across the top and straight across the bottom. This is equal to four times seven. Down here is five times three. And then this is 28 over 15. All right. Okay, so how about this weird one? So, like I said, Sometimes it makes more sense, you know, to me, maybe it'll make more sense to you to write it like they have it on this uh, first part here, this section. But to me, it makes more sense to take these negatives and put them out front. So I have negative 2 sevenths minus 9 sevenths. Okay, so now our denominators match, which means we're okay to go ahead and do the subtraction we do the subtraction, we have negative 2 minus 9. What is that? Negative 11, right? We went negative 2 on the number line, and then we went 9 further in the negative direction. So we have negative 11, right? And then this negative sign can go anywhere you want it to go. It doesn't really matter, but that works. All right. So, for these next set of examples, let's find the reciprocals. Remember what it means to be a reciprocal? The Not the opposite. So, remember, the reciprocal means the number that you multiply a number by to get one, right? Go back to the last one. Yeah, sure. It's like, so if you have two negatives, you cross them out. Ah. Wow, good, good. Thank you for the question. Good question on that. So, the reason why we can't cross these negatives out it's because there's an addition sign, right? If, if those two were multiplied together, then they would, right? But when we're talking about addition, we're talking about kind of moving left and right on the number line. Thank you, good question. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, when you have two terms that are negative, you can't cancel them out. But when you have two factors that are negative, then they do cancel. Exactly. All right, the reciprocal. So, remember if we wanted the reciprocal of one-fifth, it was five, right? Because when we multiply one-fifth by five, we get one. Remember that definition of the reciprocals? And so any number A, its reciprocal is one over A. All right, so. We need to find the reciprocal of each number if it exists. And so I'll go ahead and just let the cat out of the bag here. We've got a negative sign. And so in order to get 1, positive 1, the reciprocal has got to be negative as well. Okay. So what is the reciprocal of negative 27? What do you guys think? Well, like negative 
Yeah. I think I, yeah, I think I heard it correctly from a bunch of different people, right? One over negative 27 or, you know, you put the negative sign wherever you want, right? The 27s cancel and we get one. So yes, exactly. And so reciprocals for negatives are the same thing as they would be for positives. They're just negative. <laughs> okay, so reciprocal of negative three over four. What do you guys think? What is it? So I just blurt it out. Negative four over three. There we go, right? Fours cancel, the threes cancel. Hey, and so do the negatives, and we get one. All right, negative one over five. Well, the reciprocal to that is just negative five, right? Fives cancel, so the negatives, and we get one. Okay, what is the reciprocal of zero? Does it exist? Yeah, no, it doesn't exist, right? Because, like we went over, there's a law saying that any number multiplied by zero is zero, which means there is no number that you can multiply by zero and get one. That is the only number without a reciprocal. All right, so let's do some different types of examples. And this will jog our memory as to the rules of multiplication and division with fractions. So, suppose we have this fraction that we're going to divide. How do we do it? Negative 2 over 3. Exactly. Times negative 4 over 5, right? Yeah. Rules for division, right? It's just like multiplication, except we flip the denominator first, right? Memorize those guys. Okay, so now that we've flipped that guy, and we could have done this before, we cancel our negatives, and then we multiply straight across. So this guy is 2 times 4 over 3 times 5, and we get 8 over 15. All right, so this guy here, I'm going to take this fraction in the denominator and flip it. So we have a negative 3 fourths multiplied by 10 over 3. Okay, we multiply straight across and we get 3 times 10 on the numerator, 4 times 3 in the denominator, and we still have our little negative sign hanging out. So then we have 30 over 12, and that's negative, which is 15 over 6, negative. All right, so we just did the division like usual, and we just kept the negative sign with us because there's only one of them. All righty. So, what was the point of this? So, this guy here, 27.9 over a negative 3. Not sure why they have this one in there. I'm just going to do this with a calculator though, because I don't feel like doing it longhand. All right, the, no the answer is 9.3. I guess I could have figured that one out maybe. Um, and since we had one negative sign to start with, it didn't cancel, so it's negative. What about this guy? What's this guy equal to? Zero. Very good, right? We got a zero in the numerator, which means it's just zero. What about this guy? Five. Undefined. Undefined. Remember, we have a zero in the denominator here, right? Remember, kittens, kittens, bad things happen to kittens when this happens. So, all right. So, division involving zero. And so here we, we relearn this rule. For any real number a, a over zero is undefined. And if a is not equal to 0, then 0 over a is just equal to 0. <clears throat> Basically says we never divide by 0. Okay. And if we have time and I have and I can get the sound to work, we can watch a video on that after this. <clears throat> All right, so, so that was 1.7. Uh, multiplication with negatives, uh, dividing by zero and all that. Uh, now we'll move into 1.8 and this is all about exponential notation. 
we're just learning how we write powers, right? So in this section, we're going to go over notation for exponents, uh, order of operations. And so if you have a big, ugly problem, we're going to learn where to start first. Um, distributive law for simplifying and the opposites of sums. All right. So without further ado, let's get into exponential notation. All right. So exponential notation. Um, basically, basically, what we mean by um, powers, maybe I'll just read the definition. A product like 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, in which the factors are all the same, is called a power. Powers are often written in exponential notation. So, for example, if there are uh, four threes, right, and they're all multiplied together, this is written as three to the fourth, where this little exponent up here indicates how many factors of the three there are. All right, the number four in this definition is called the exponent. The number three is called the base, right, and so exponent, base. All right, so in sort of more official terms, sorry, I should have underlined this. This is the official definition. Um, <clears throat> so for any natural number n, b to the n means this many factors of b lined up n times, right? Does that make sense to everybody? OK. So you know, if we had x times x, this would be x squared. If we had x times x, times x, this would be x cubed, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so suppose we have this number of tens lined up in a, in a product. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, we write this as 10 to the fifth, all right? And that's just, all it is is notation, right? This is just preventing us from having to write this thing over and over and over and over again. All right, and suppose they ask us to simplify some of these. All right, we rewrite this. We rewrite this guy as 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. Whoops, 25, not 22. So, and, and here, is, here is where it's important, right? I'm going to go, I'm about to do these two examples, which are different, right? They give us different answers. And this is where it's important to realize that negative 5 is equal to negative 1 times 5. All right. <clears throat> so, and I guess <laughs> maybe this is a little too early to be teaching you that rule. Um, anyway, we'll just do it. So, this guy, right, notice how the parentheses are here and they are around the negative sign and the 5, right? So, that means that we are going to say negative 5 times negative 5. Right? The two negatives cross each other out, and then we just get 25. However, if the parentheses are not around the negative sign, this actually means this. You guys see how that's different? And so the square no longer applies to the negative sign. right? And so what this means is that we have negative 1 times 5 times 5. And the result is negative 25. Right? And so this, meaning this, is kind of the key to that. Right? And so it's like you need the parentheses because the parentheses tells you that the negative 1 is included. Right? If there's no parentheses there, then the square is only attached to the 5. All right? So, how about this guy? Well, the parentheses are attached to the negative sign, so what this means is negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, right? Two of these negatives cancel each other out. And so what we have here is 5 times 5 times negative 5, which gives us 25 times negative 5, which gives us negative 125. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now how about this guy? So once again, so we got parentheses around this. This guy, when we write it out, it is 
two n times two n times two n. Right? What's this equal to? Well, what's up, Kevin? On B, you have negative five in parentheses to the second power. Yes. And it's positive twenty-five. And then on B, you've got negative five in the parentheses to the third power, and you have a negative. Yeah, and remember, so three negatives equal another negative, right? Any odd number of negatives, right? Does that, yeah. right? And so if these two negatives canceled out just like they did above, and then the last one, the third one, that pesky guy hung out there. I also have a question. What is, yeah. um, you just did, is that just one negative one? So it's Exactly. And that's the big difference, right? Um, because, because the parentheses weren't around the negative, this square sign does not attach to this negative one. This negative one will stay the same. See how I just left it there this whole time, right? And so like the square sign wasn't attached to the negative one. We did not square that. Okay, and, and we'll, we'll get more into that in a little bit and it should make a little bit more sense. So this guy, Right, uh, multiplication is commutative, and these grouping symbols don't really matter, as we learned with multiplication a while ago. Right, they're associative. So we're going to rewrite this as two times two times two times n times n times n, which is equal to two to the third times n to the third, which is equal to eight times n. Right. So one thing that I'm going to show you guys real quick here is that with these parentheses around here, this power sort of distributes into each, each factor of the product, right? And so what this is, we could do it longhand like we did up here, where we wrote down each one, you know, and then we regrouped them. But we could also just rewrite this as so. We could say two to the third times n to the third, right? See how that distributes into each and every term, right? And then of course this is just eight times n to the third. All right, and so, you know, if we had x, y, z to the tenth, this would be equal to x to the tenth, y to the tenth, z to the tenth. And so it distributes. And that's another, you know, and that's another important reason, right, why this you got to have the uh, grouping symbols if you want to include the one because the powers distribute over the grouping symbols, right? All right, order of operations. So um, a lot of times we're faced with some big ugly math problems and we need to know where to start first. And now everybody has to start in the first place so that we don't get different answers for the same problems, right? Um, depending on how you do your order of operations, it can really change your answers significantly. <clears throat> so, what we do first, and um, let's see now, maybe I will just rewrite this problem so we can do it as we go over the operations. So suppose we have 7x squared plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5x. All right, so order of operations. First thing we do, we simplify, if possible, within the innermost grouping symbols and above or below any fraction bars, right? So our grouping symbols in this example problem are the brackets right here. And so if we can, we take care of things inside of those first. Um, we can't, right? What we can do is get rid of those grouping symbols, though. Right, and so we don't really like these. We know that we have the three out here, and if we distribute the three in, those grouping symbols go away. All right, and so that's kind of how you do it. You start inside the grouping symbols. If there were anything to add, we would have added it. Uh, and then if you can get rid of those grouping symbols, then do that, right? A lot of times you'll be able to distribute in and get rid of grouping symbols, okay? So our next line is gonna be seven x squared plus three x squared plus 6x minus 5x. All right, next step. Simplify all exponential expressions. So there really aren't any, this is maybe a bad example problem because there aren't any exponential expressions. Um, <clears throat> but, 
but that's okay. So if there were, we'd do the exponents first, um, but there are not. So what we're going to do is perform all multiplication and division working from left to right. Okay, so there really isn't any multiplication division. Yeah, this is a horrible example. Um, <laughs> if there were, you would do it from left to right. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do all our addition and subtraction working from the left to the right. And so um, what we're going to do is basically add like terms. And so we have, what do you guys think? Are these like terms? How come? You can just say the definition if you want, right? Because they, yeah, because they have exactly the same variable factors, right? And that's x to the second power, right? So add those guys up. 7 plus 3 is 10, 10x squared. Right? And then these guys also have the exact same variable factor, and it's x. So 6 minus 5, we get plus x. Then we're done. Okay, so yeah, that was a bad example. Uh, I think we'll be doing some more that make a little more sense. <clears throat> okay, so how about we do this example here real quick, example A. So we don't have any grouping symbols. We don't have any exponents. So the next thing we need to do is go from left to right doing multiplication and division. All right, so 15, there's nothing to do there. Subtract, we can multiply these two together to get 10 plus 3. Next step, perform all addition and subtraction. Okay, 15 minus 10 plus 3. What is that? 8. There we go. All right, so just took it one step at a time. Uh, there wasn't too, anything too bad in the, that example. Uh, I think we're going to be running into some uglier examples here in a little bit, like this one. All right, so this guy here, first thing I'm going to notice is that this is written in a funky way. So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. Right? And remember, we don't, this is not a good division sign for us in this class. This, it doesn't work for what we're doing very well. So we like to rewrite these. And so we're going to rewrite this fraction. So 8 plus, um, oh, and actually that works as a grouping symbol. Sorry, I started writing this the incorrect way. So this is 8 fourths. There we go. Plus. Okay, so now let's tackle this guy. So first of all, we do the grouping symbols first, right? So there are two sets of grouping symbols. We have our square brackets, and then we have our round brackets. Uh, we do the innermost grouping first, and so it's like uh, it's like reverse of an onion, right? You peel, uh, you start with the inner layer, and you like get out to the outer peel last. All right, so <clears throat> so we're going to do this subtraction first. All right, and we have to rewrite the whole thing. 8 over 4 plus 3 times blah, 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 two, negative 2 cubed. Okay, <clears throat> so now we still have to take care of these brackets. So according to our rules, we're supposed to do, we're still doing these inner brackets, right? Because we still want to take care of these first. But we have two options now. We could either apply the exponent or we could apply the multiplication. What comes first? Well, think hard. Exponents first, right? Exponents is number two. Multiplication is number three. And so the exponent comes first in this guy. All right, so we go through the tedious task of rewriting everything again. Okay, and so what's negative 2 cubed? And remember, there are parentheses there, right? Negative 4. Not 4, right? 2 times 2 is 4, and then one more 2. Right, negative 8, exactly. So now we have 9 plus 2 times a negative 8. All right. Now, 
we got rid of, sort of got rid of those inner parentheses. Now we're going to do the stuff in the outer parentheses. Okay. So, rewrite everything. And I'm just going to, even though we're supposed to do this last, this is just a fraction that equals 2. So I'm going to start writing that as 2 already because I'm tired of writing the fraction. All right. So now we take care of this multiplication. 2 times a negative 8. Negative 16. And I'm doing this in a few more steps than what you guys will need to do on your homework. You know, like you could wrap a couple of these into one step if you want. Um, just be careful not to skip anything. All right. So now, still taking care of the parentheses. So we keep working on that. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. Nice. Okay. And then this guy, 2 plus 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Just going to erase that. And what's this guy equal to? Negative 19, good. All right. So, as you can see, it seems a little more, a little bit tedious, especially while we're learning these, but um, by the time you're done with these class, uh, orders of operations will be second nature. You know, you should be just kind of ripping right through these guys. Um, but just remember, innermost parentheses first, right? Uh, try and handle those as far as possible before you go to the outermost parentheses, exponents before multiplications, things like that. <clears throat> All right. So this guy here. Uh, so remember, the division sign in the middle here, this acts as a grouping symbol. And so, you know, we can imagine two like large grouping symbols around both the numerator and the denominator if we want to do that. All right. So first things first, let's see now. Let's just start in the numerator um, and we have parentheses so we might as well start there all right so 9 minus 7 is 2 right yes yeah. okay and then 12 times 2 is 24 so this first portion in the blue highlight is equal to 24 you guys see what I did there just skipped one quick step all right Okay, now we can go through and do our multiplication, right? 4 times 5 is 20. Now let's go through and simplify our bottom because this is kind of like it was in brackets. Uh, 2 to the 4th, well, that's equal to 16. And then 3 squared, that's equal to 9. I don't know why my plus sign looks like a T here, but it does. All right, now add everything together. 44 on top, 16 plus 9 is 20. Seven, right? No. Twenty-five. <laughs> Twenty-five. All right. So that was it, right? We just did uh, numerator and denominator separately, did our own order of operations on each, and then simplified when we got down to the last bits. Okay. So... We're going to do some more simplification examples. Uh, and in most of these examples, they have distribution involved, which we already kind of went over on some of the previous examples. So once again, we want to take care of our brackets first. There's nothing to take care of inside the bracket, right? We can't add those terms because they're not like. So the very first thing we're going to do is get rid of the brackets using the distribution law. So we're going to distribute the two into each one of these. We're going to get 5x minus 9 plus 2 times 4x, which is 8x, and then plus 2 times 5, which is 10, right? So this is a like term, and these are like terms. So we're going to add 5 and 8x, which is going to give us 13x, and 10 minus 9 is plus one, nice. All right, so this guy is right along the same lines. 
So once again, we have some stuff inside the parentheses. We notice they're not like terms, so we can't add them. So the first thing to do is distribute and get rid of those parentheses. So we're going to have 7x squared plus 3 times x squared, 3x squared, exactly, plus 6x, and then minus 5x. Right? We have like terms once again. And so now we can add those. 7x squared plus 3x squared, that gives us 10x squared. And then 6x minus a 5x, that gives us an x. Right? Okay. So now, opposites of sums. So <clears throat> when we come down to one of these problems where we have grouping symbols, and we're used to seeing, we're used to seeing like a number out in front, like a five or a three, like we had on this last one, and we distribute that number. Well, just like in those problems, we distribute this negative into the sum, right? And so this one, once again, negative uh, a plus b is the same as saying negative one times a plus b. Right? And so we distribute that negative one in. And so the opposite of a sum, a plus b, is just a negative sign out in front of that. You can distribute that in, and it just basically changes the sign of everything inside the sum. All right? So for an example, let's go to this guy below. So we want to take care of stuff inside the parentheses. Nothing to take care of. So we begin writing, and then we distribute this negative sign in here, right? So that gives us negative 4x minus 2. Uh, so then we can combine like terms with these two. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and we get negative x minus 2. Um, and if somebody uh, asked you to um, factor this final product, we could factor a negative 1 out, right? Just like we distributed a negative 1, not like that's what they asked for in this example, but if you wanted to, you could, right? We pull a negative 1 out of each term, and we get a negative x plus 2, if we want to, right? This would have been the final answer, though, if you wanted it to be. All right, <clears throat> so this guy here. Once again, nothing to do inside these parentheses, so we're just going to apply the negative sign, right? So this is equal to 5t squared plus 2t, right? We're going to distribute that in. Now we have a negative times a negative. That makes that a positive, right? So that turns into a plus 4t squared, right? Then we have negative 1 times 9t, and that gives us negative 9t. Now, go through and find our like terms. We have t squares there, and we have just plain old t's there. So, 5 plus 4 is 9 t squared, and 2 minus 9, what is that? Negative 7 t, very good. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. So, um, oh, and interesting enough, um, since we're a little ahead of schedule, we could also factor something out of this final answer if we wanted to. Does anybody see something we could factor out of there? And it's T. T. Who said that? Who's it? Nice. Nicely done. So, yeah, this, we can rewrite it, right? This is 9 times T times T minus 7 times T. Since we have one t in each factor, or in each term, excuse me, we can factor that guy out. We get a t times 9t minus 7, if we wanted to, which we did. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going on these guys. <clears throat> All right, once again, it's the same story, right? We can't really do anything inside these parentheses, so we're going to distribute this negative 2 in. All right, so we have 3n, negative 2 times 4n, negative 8n, negative 2 times 5, 
positive 10. And 3n minus 8n is negative 5n plus 10. All right. Oh, we're going to keep going with this factor stuff uh, just because these are all nice examples for factoring. So if we then wanted to factor this guy out, we could rewrite this guy as negative 5 times n plus 2 times 5. All right. And so we can factor a 5 out of each term. And there we go. All right, so let's do another one. These are starting to get a little tedious. I should have written down fewer of these examples. <laughs> so, okay, here we go again. So we got multiple brackets here. We have square brackets and we have round brackets again. So we're going to take care of what's inside the round brackets first. Not like terms, so we can't do anything. So we're going to distribute the 5 first. So 7x cubed plus 2 minus, whoops, got a little ahead of myself. Okay, so 5 times x cubed is 5x cubed. Right, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, uh, and then plus 8. And so after we do this distribution, sometimes, um, you know, like after we do the distribution, it just becomes part of the sum. And so see how we just, we just attached it to this positive 8. The positive 8 just hangs out there. And so if it's not part of the, uh, the thing that you're doing the distribution, it just hangs out and gets added to it all the way at the end. All right. So we rewrite this guy once again. Um, we'll take this in baby steps. 5x cubed and 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay. okay. So now we're going to keep taking care of these parentheses until they go away. We have a negative sign out here in front. And so we're just going to take the opposite of this sum. Whoops. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I turned this cubed into a squared on the second line. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, plus 2. Now, in, the, in order to apply this opposite sign, we distribute to everything, which means the signs just change. So that positive 5x cubed turns into a negative 5x cubed, and the positive 3 turns into a negative 3. Uh, and then we collect our like terms, right? We have 7 minus 5 that are attached to x cubed which gives us 2x cubed. And then we have 2 minus 3, which gives us a negative 1. And there's nothing to factor out of that final guy. OK, so real quick, I'm going to try and get the sound to work so we can go over this video. It might not work. In which case, I'm sorry. That doesn't seem to work, does it? Never said what define what it was to divide by zero. What is that value? Well, the reason they haven't done it is because they couldn't come right. up with a good answer. Can you guys hear that? There's no. Also credit him maybe with being a bit of a philosopher, once commented that black holes are where God divided by zero. And I won't get into the physics of it, and you know, obviously the, the metaphor breaks down in certain ways, but it is strangely appropriate because black holes are where our current understanding of physics seem to break down. And dividing by zero, as simple of an idea as that seems to be, is where our mathematics also breaks down. This is un 
undefined. And sometimes when you see undefined when you're in math class, it seems like a very strange thing. It seems like a very bizarre idea. But it really means exactly what the word means. Mathematicians have never said what defined what it must mean to divide by zero. What is that value? And the reason they haven't done it is because they couldn't come up with a good answer. There's no good answer here, no good definition. And because of that, any non-zero number divided by zero is just left undefined. No seven divided by zero, eight divided by zero, negative one divided by zero. We say all of these things are just undefined. Now you might say, hey, you know, well, if we can just define it, let's at least try to come up with a definition of what it means to take a non-zero number divided by zero. So let's do that right now. Now we can just take the simplest of all non-zero numbers. We'll just do it with one, but we could have done this with any non-zero number. Let's take the example of one, and since we don't know what it means, or we're trying to figure out what it means to divide by zero, let's just try out really, really, really small positive numbers. Let's divide by really, really small positive numbers and see what happens as we get close to zero. So let's divide by 0 0.1. Well, this will get us to 10. If we divide one by 0 0.01, that gets us to 100. If I, let me go really, really close to zero. If I divide one by 0 0.000001, this gets us, so this is not a 10 hundredth, thousand, 10 thousandth, 100 thousand, this is a millionth. One divided by a, a million. basic concept. That's going to give us one, one million. So we see a pattern here. As we divide one by smaller and smaller and smaller positive numbers, we get a larger and larger and larger value. So based on just this, you might say, hey, well, I, I've got some, somewhat of a definition for one divided by zero. Maybe we can say that one divided by zero is positive infinity. If we, as we put smaller and smaller positive numbers here, we get super, super, super large numbers right over here. But then your, your friend might say, well, that worked when we divided by positive numbers close to zero, but what happens when we divide by negative numbers close to zero? So let's try those out. Well, one divided by 0 0.1, or I should say negative 0 0.1, that's going to be negative 10. One divided by negative 0 0.01, that's going to be negative 100. And if we go all the way to one divided by negative 0 0.000001, yep, I drew the same number of zeros, that gets us to negative 1 million. And so when we see, when we, we keep dividing one by negative numbers that are closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, we get a very different answer. We actually start approaching negative infinity. So over here we said maybe it would be positive infinity, but you can make an equally strong argument that it could be a very different number. Po negative infinity is going the exact opposite direction. So you can make an equally strong argument that it should be negative infinity. And this is why mathematician says, well, there's just no good answer here. And especially one that's consistent with the rest of mathematics, they could have just said it's equal to, you know, 42 or something like that. But that would have that would make no sense. It's neither one of these values, and it wouldn't be consistent with everything else we know. So they just left the whole thing undefined. And there it is. All right, guys. So we're out a little bit early today. Um, thanks for a good class. Hey. And Zero is a I will be in a learning peril. center till in. five if you guys need any help. Oh, did you want to go over those problems real quick? Yeah, let's do those.